Hello, my name is Chris Dye, and I'm Assistant Professor of Music Education at Middle Tennessee State University and a member of the Policy ASPA of the Society for Music Teacher Education. In this presentation, I will discuss policy making regarding music's place in the school schedule. When examining musical offerings in K-12 public schools, we should be careful to distinguish between students' access to music education and the actual provision of music instruction to all students. The overwhelming majority of schools offer some form of music education. Parsad and Spiegelman found that American students have access to musical offerings at 94% of elementary schools and 91% of secondary schools, though notably patterns of access can be predicted by socioeconomic factors. Access is less likely in more impoverished school communities. Despite the high rates of access, participation in music programs varies widely between elementary and secondary levels. Abril and Galt found that 92.5% of elementary school principals report that music is required in their school, whereas only 34% of secondary principals report music requirements in their curriculum. Most states have policies regarding music's place in the school schedule. The ArtScan policy database reports that 44 or 45 states require fine arts offerings at the elementary, middle, and high school levels, and 26 states require completion of at least one arts course for high school graduation. The specific language of state policies vary, however, and can leave a great deal of interpretation to local policymakers. For instance, in my state of Tennessee, the Education Code specifies that all districts will include music in the K-8 course of instruction, though it does not mandate that all students receive said instruction. Additionally, the code encourages implementing all standards-aligned arts courses. Since there are state standards for high school music, this could be interpreted as a strong indicator that high schools should offer music, but it could also be ignored as an encouragement rather than a requirement. Local school boards and principals have considerable influence over the offering and scheduling of music instruction. As such, while state-level policies can provide a model framework for music in schools, the most important advocacy work must be undertaken at the local level. The NAFME Opportunity to Learn standards are a key resource for advocates. They outline national benchmarks for staffing, scheduling, and curricular components of well-resourced music education programs. Regarding scheduling, the Opportunity to Learn standards suggest that general music should be provided to all students through 8th grade for at least 90 minutes per week, and that secondary ensembles should be scheduled in an equivalent fashion to other core academic classes. Music education advocates who are aware of their existing state policies and the expectations outlined in the national standards are well prepared to work towards ensuring equitable scheduling for music in their local schools.